So I've been using Windsurf for about a week now. Actually, to be exact, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six days now, with a total of 83 completions up here, where I've used 19 user prompt credits and 50 flow action credits, which isn't that much. Because again, I've only been using it for a week, and mostly during a, a Next.js front-end GoFiber back-end project setup. You can actually see where it's helped out right here. So about 45% has been TypeScript. Some markdown just because I get it to write my readme for me. I have to make adjustments, but just the overall, this is what I need. Go ahead, go, TSX, unspecified JSON JavaScript, and some Docker file. Oh, we could have just seen everything right here. But I'll actually do some live coding with Windsurf later in this video, so stay tuned. And I know I'm supposed to be coding on NeoVim, on NixOS, but I haven't started that yet. I've set up NixOS like base, but I've just been so busy that I haven't been able to set up everything else properly. And although it's supposed to increase your efficiency and speed and things of that nature, we all know that it takes a while to get there. You have to take a couple steps back to take that, you know, leap forward. And I don't have time to take a couple steps back. So I've been using VS Code for years, as many of you may know. And I just recently got access to Windsurf. And Windsurf, if you didn't know, not sponsored, by the way, this video is actually sponsored by Micro Center. We'll talk about them a little bit later. But I did get Windsurf for free for about 60 days, I think. But that in no way influences my thoughts on it at all. Now's a little bit later. Time to talk about Micro Center. If you didn't know, February is their BYO, build your own month. So if you were looking to build a PC, now's the time to do it. But not just build, upgrade too, because you can get any component that you need, that you want, like any of this RAM or any of these cases or any of these power supplies. You know Micro Center. You've bought something from Micro Center before. I'm just here to tell you that it is quite literally the best time to do it because they're having amazing sales. And, all, and I think they always have bundles, AMD bundles, Intel bundles, which are always really good deals, but a lot of them being even better deals now this month if you want to shop around well one go to your local micro center if you're lucky enough to have one but two i'll leave the link to all the deals in the description below and a link right below that is going to be about recycling with micro center so your old technology you can give old tech a new life and support your community by recycling responsibly they have electronic recycling computer donations gpu trade-ins so just take a look at here as well anything from tvs ink and toner peripherals components and then they have this video hear all about it that's a night if you've oh, it's such a cool story go to oh yeah speaking of which uh santa clara california new micro center store coming soon oh wait what does it say early access offer free 128 gigabyte flash drive huh so if you do live here or plan on going to the micro center here sign up you get a free 128 gigabyte flash drive i guess i'll leave the link to here below as well somewhere in the description just look for it all right back to windsurf as you can see this is like vs code that's because, I mean, I don't know the exact facts, but I assume since VS Code is open source, they just forked VS Code, which I'm pretty sure is exactly what Cursor did, and then just put their AI agent in there, as opposed to having it as an extension, because I think they needed more control over it. Pretty sure Codium is an extension for VS Code, but then they launched Windsurf to compete with Cursor, and the GitHub Copilot now has released their agent, or at least announced it. I don't know if they've released it just yet. But my first impressions of Windsurf overall, not impressions, but back like day one, day two, I was like, it doesn't feel that much different than GitHub Copilot or Tab9 or, or, or something like that. It was just autocomplete, which they call super complete. But then the more I did it, the more I realized, wait a second, they have this whole thing over here called Cascade, which again, I have not used Cursor. I say again, I don't know if I've said that to begin with. I have not used Cursor. Let me do a new conversation. So right with Cascade, you can kick off a new project or make changes across your entire code base just like this. And what I've used so far is like at index.ts and I can reference a file or I can come over here and I can say, oh, well, you know, this use effect right here, edit or chat. What does edit do? Okay, so I can enter an instruction right here, windsurf fast or GPT-40 mini, GPT-40, Claude 3.5 sonnet, which of course is what I would use because it's so far been the best that I've tried out. I haven't used these that much to be fair. So, or you could just throw it over into the chat over here 
just like that. This is what I typed. And then whatever you're talking about will have the exact context that you want it to have while also searching throughout the rest of your code for context that it needs. I'm not saying it does that every time, but if you specify, hey, what's a good example here? So like if we're in layout.tsx and I wanna say, hey, well, I, I don't know, this, let's say, you know, like we had before the benchmark, this function is being called from another file. It's going to look at that other file to see what this function is, which that right there has been something that I've been saying nonstop, is that AI needs to have a full code base of context to really be able to help you. Sure, it can do little code snippets here and there, but to see it, have the ability to dive into other files and even run commands in the terminal and adjust this file and that file and do this and do that and kind of run through and actually runs through. So it analyze index.ts over here, analyze schema.ts over here and updating the import to use boxes instead of user tables, modifying the example CRUD operations to work with the boxes schema, adjusting the types and fields. So this was the edit request, and then I was able to accept or reject. And then, oh, this one had not done a command. How do I, oh, I just go back to start new conversation, fix TypeScript error. So I was having trouble following the documentation on Drizzle. It was a little bit different than what I guess it was supposed to be. And I was getting errors where I shouldn't be getting errors. So I was like, eh. Instead of asking ChatGPT and pasting everything in there, let me ask Cascade over here. And I actually think I have this on footage, so maybe you'll be seeing that instead of seeing my face in this instance right here. But it analyzed some file, it edited, and asked me to accept or reject. There was still an issue, no config path provided using default drizzle.config.ts. It analyzed that file. It said, hey, you have to you know, make sure your local environment variables contains the database URL. I think it did. It said try out this command and it did just say try out this command. Sometimes I've seen, yeah, right here where it ran terminal command npx drizzle kit push. And did it work? I don't think so, but it gave me the understanding of what it's trying to do with all of this. And then I hopped back into the docs and I was able to figure it out. So in this instance, did it like solve my problems? No. In other instances, did it? It did. Am I asking myself easy questions just to make things easy? Yes, I am. I hate when people do that. However, I did have some issues to where, like if I were to copy this, and like I said before, what is it? Edit? I had it where this, I don't know when it popped up. Maybe I accidentally clicked something, but normally you're able to come over here and click the X and it disappears. There was a point in time where I clicked the X and it didn't disappear and it really pissed me off. I had to shut down everything, restart it, and then for whatever reason had to re-log in to fly because even though I continue to add it to my Bash RC and continue to do everything that I need to do, I have to re-log in every single time I open up this thing. That's not a windsurf <laughs> critique. That's just a an annoyance that I've had. And then there's also something where when I had accepted some of the code, if I can find this footage, I'm gonna put it on the screen. I had accepted some of the code and then I'm like, eh, actually I don't want this. So I did control Z and then it said, oh, accept or reject as if I went back to where it was, where I could accept or reject. I'm like, okay, it gave me the option again. So then I clicked reject. I'm like, okay, we're good to go. I'm like, oh no, this actually I wanted to go before. And then I hit control Z again and then it did it again. And I kept trying to hit control Z, but it wouldn't go further past that, if I recall correctly. And it was like, it was just like it was a little bug, like that box sticking there, and it was really annoying. And again, I had to close down everything because I didn't know how to fix it. Uh, maybe there's an easy workaround, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter because it should be more intuitive for someone who, hey, if I want to undo, 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 I shouldn't be faced with this you know, accept or reject every single time, even after I tried to accept or reject it. Did I accept it wrong? Did I reject it wrong? I don't know. Oh yeah, and about the idea that this is a VS Code fork, I really like that. Because don't try to reinvent the wheel with your own IDE. There's so many good IDEs or text editor, code editors out there that you can just clone and I'm familiar with it, it feels good. I don't wanna to have to learn about your entire new layout because if that was the case, I wouldn't have used it since it's just a fork of VS Code or VS Codium or whatever and I could just have a nice WSL Ubuntu down here, 
that makes me happy. I like that. Again, I think Cursor does the same thing. This isn't necessarily like a Cursor versus Windsurf video. Just like my first week using Windsurf as someone who's never used the AI agent code, peer code guy tool thing. What are these called? GitHub called theirs like it's no longer a payer programmer. It's a peer programmer because we added this agent thing, which is this, which is this, the agent thing, which does like iterative problem solving, which is the whole entire like selling point of this as opposed to something like tab nine is that it all the way over there, it again, iterates through, it analyzes some, some code files. It, it actually tries a few things and says, oh, that doesn't work. Let me try it again, which is pretty nice. So yeah. However, there is one annoyance well, one other annoyance, I guess I've listed a handful of annoyances already, and that is just like all AIs, its training data is deprecated. So it didn't realize that next, where are we at? Next 15.1.6 existed. I think I have that chat somewhere. Yeah, right here. Um, your next JS version 15.1.6 appears to be incorrect. This version doesn't exist. The latest version of next JS is currently 14.x.x. So yeah, that's an issue. Um, I don't think I've had hallucination issues just yet, but I, it's an AI, of course it's going to hallucinate, but this is an issue because you want to run mostly up to date things like up to date Java, right? You don't want to be stuck on Java 8 for the rest of eternity, right? Who'd have thought? Couldn't be me. Actually, let's try this one thing real quick. Instead of having, you know, I just did node version, which obviously I would continue to do node version or node V or whatever you can do, but like uh, you can control I in here and it works in the terminal and say node version. If you don't remember the exact command and then it would, okay, yeah, let's run it. 22.13.1. So if you don't remember a command, but you remember like the idea, okay, what am I trying to do? Explain it in there. That's actually pretty nice. I haven't tested it enough. That was the very first time I've used it. So I don't know how good it is, but it's been good in like the control I wind surf fast is what they call control I. Well, again, I selected 3.5 Sonic here, but wind surf fast. So all in all quick and dirty, I think I just went over everything that I experienced and how I used wind surf over this past week or so. And again, really setting up a project, but I do want to test it out with my advent of code rust code because I did not use iterator or iter methods. I used for loops <laughs> because I'm a Java dev, but and I, when I was learning Rust, I just didn't realize I didn't understand it, it iter method. I, try, I was trying to learn. So what I want to do is go back through and see how it works with that. For example, I have four here, four here, four here. We have another four down here. So what I'm going to do is take this file. So I don't know if I'm able to like, Mm, I'm not sure if I do at yeah, main.rs. I have a lot since I have like many of the days in here. This is day two, part two. Instead of for loops, use the iter method, period. Sometimes I like to keep AI open ended. So assuming that's best practice. All right, let's see. And this is what it gave us. So what I do, replace this for loop out here with for each method. Um, and then all of this was replaced with split white space map to replace this for and then collect. And then we're using the slice for is safe, probably everywhere we use is safe, replace this for loop with the any method. And then yeah, slice right here for unsafe reports, and then down here slice right here, and we replace this for loop with the all method. There are a lot of iterator methods going on in Rust, aren't there? At least I got the Windows 2 part right. And yeah, I knew this. I knew this was quick and dirty, <laughs> but I just said, screw it. It works. But this is very clean. So you don't have to return anything. It's just report dot window. Oh, yeah. Okay. I see. So it's within this. Nice. Well, it's nice if it actually works. Let's test it. Oh, I guess I could just test it by doing this right here. Couldn't I? Oh, syntax error, syntax error, mismatch closing delimiter. So it missed the closing brace for the for each block. And this is it trying to fix it. So let's just accept. Let's give it another shot. Come on now. Wait, now we have an extra one. 
to be clear, the point of this is not for me to fix it. It's for it to do it itself. So let's accept that. All right, it looks like it's better now. And I accepted it, so now we're gonna run again. This one should work, it looks right. Yeah, reports 577, I think that was the right answer. I guess there's a quick way to find out. Cargo run, and this should be 577. Okay, so it fixed it after three iterations. It made the big adjustments in the first go, and then mismatch closing delimiter so it messed up with the brackets tried to fix it messed up again and then actually finally fixed it and we're good to go that was good again it wasn't a large code base by any stretch of the imagination it was just a simple file single file that i had to look through but it was able to refactor my code from crappy rust code that was clearly written by a java developer to something that i mean presumably is actually good as a rust developer or at least it's better than what I had. I'm not good enough in Rust to know if that was great. But the process, it really did everything itself and came out with something that actually worked. So if you want to give it a shot, give it a shot. But what's coming up next is more Rust development, more NixOS setup. And what's coming up next is more NixOS, more Rust development, seeing if I can get acquainted with Vim motions, and then diving into NeoVim. And maybe in a month from now, I'll give you an update on how I've been liking Windsurf. Because I'll keep Windsurf on this machine, NeoVim on that machine. Maybe throw Vim Motions in there. We'll see. But if any of that's interesting to you, sounds interesting to you, make sure you subscribe. Hit the bell. I don't upload that much, so you're not going to get spammed. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.